Yo guys, what is going on? It's Psycho Sibs Gaming, and today we are covering the last of our farming guides, the Sheriff Badge Farm. So we've already done the Marshmallow Farm, the Taco Farm, the Coin Farm, the XP Farm, the Prize Bulb Farm. We've done it all, but today we're doing the Sheriff Badge Farm. Now that's not to say we can't invent some more effective methods in the future. I'm just saying this is the last item that we need to complete the full set. So with that being said, we're gonna hop into the changing booth. We're gonna go through the upgrades and character you need to get this rolling. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Otherwise, sit back, relax. You're watching Psycho Sibs Gaming. Alright guys, so this strategy is going to make full use of the Reload Gatling upgrade. Now this is an upgrade that you unlock pretty far down the road for Pea Shooter. If you don't have it, this method won't be as effective. It's still doable, it's still fairly doable, but it won't be as effective. Other than Reload Gatling on the Pea Shooter, you can throw on the Explosive Gatling and Combo, just if you want to speed things up. But otherwise, throw those upgrades on. Come talk to our little acorn buddy over here and hop into a casual realm on Mount Steep. Obviously, because that's the only place you can get sheriff badges from. So, to no one's surprise, we will be farming one of the bounties here in Mount Steep. If you don't know how to unlock the bounties, come right over here to Aaron, talk to him, and he'll give you the bounty pass. If you already have the bounty pass, then follow me over here. We will be able to activate the bounty on a gargantuan named Tiny. If you don't know where I am, Take a look at your map. I am pretty close to the old town. Um, all you're gonna do here then is hop onto this little phone booth and then hop up to the top of the roof and you will find the bounty hunt right here. So like I said, this is a hunt for a gargantuar named Tiny. Essentially what will happen is the gargantuar will spawn right here with two scientists healing him constantly. Um, you cannot deal damage to the gargantuar until the two scientists are killed. So. We'll kill the two scientists off, we'll kill the gargantuar, and then we're going to kill two more scientists that spawn further down. That probably didn't make any sense, but we're just going to do it in action, and I'll show you, and I'll explain why reload gatling is so important. So after you activate the bounty, come right over here, shoot out a chili beam bomb, that'll kill the two scientists, and then you can hop into your gatling gun. In this form, you'll notice that because of that buffed reload gatling upgrade, you, your Gatling gun will never decrease in ammo as long as you are getting headshots on Tiny. And as you can see, it just took mere seconds to wipe out Tiny, and then we can focus those last few shots on the scientists that spawn behind him. So all in all, if you do this properly, and I know I messed up a little bit at the end there because one of those poles got in my way, but basically you should be able to kill two scientists and then Tiny the Gargantuar and then two more scientists in a very short period of time. We're gonna do it one more time here, I'll show you. So shoot the chili bean bomb, once that blows up, hop into reload Gatling, now you can deal damage to Tiny. Make sure you're doing headshots because it needs to be critical damage in order to get that reload to kick in. But as you'll see here, we're gonna do damage, do damage, do damage, and now we've gotten into the situation where the scientists actually caught up with him, but we can finish them off pretty quickly. And there we go, Tiny's down and our bounty is finished. And we'll just do our best to sprint over to those sheriff badges before they disappear, and then we can hop right back on up to the bounty area, where we should be able to activate it in just a couple of seconds. So now the real question is, how many badges do you actually earn per hour, and how many coins does this translate into if you're running this for coin purposes? So. It takes approximately 20 seconds to finish off this bounty in its entirety, and by that I actually mean just killing Tiny. It takes 20 seconds to kill Tiny, then the bounty technically resets, um, even if you're still killing those scientists afterwards. This means it's going to take approximately 35 seconds to get through a whole cycle of the bounty because there's a 15 second wait timer uh, between when you finish the bounty and when you can start up the next one. So all in all, this means that within the span of one hour, you should be able to do this whole bounty thing approximately 100 times. So you can do this whole cycle, you can kill Tiny 100 times in an hour, approximately. And as far as badge yield goes, now the maximum amount of badges you can get from drops is going to be around 14. 
um, from what I believe. So the scientists seem to be able to drop two per person and Tiny can drop six. They might be able to go a little bit higher than that, but, but in general, it seems like the upper max is around 14, 15 badges and the lower is, you know, is maybe even like six. Sometimes the scientists don't drop badges. So it's, it's pretty, pretty difficult as far as the fluctuation. You got to get lucky sometimes, but on average, I'm just going to say that you'll get around 10 badges per bounty, considering sometimes you might get more than 10, sometimes you might get less than that, which I think is reasonable. So if we can do this 100 times in an hour and earn 10 badges approximately every time, this means we're earning around 1,000 sheriff badges per hour, which is going to be more than plenty to purchase everything in that store if you do this bounty enough time. So overall, not a bad method for sheriff badges at all. Um, I think it's super easy, super effective. But now, what if you wanted to exchange those badges for coins? Because we all know that just like tacos, you can exchange 50 sheriff badges for 6,000 coins. So if you did that and you exchanged all 1,000 badges, you'd be earning 120,000 coins per hour. However, you have to remember that you earn 500 coins every time you finish a bounty. And because this bounty goes quicker than all of the other bounties we've discussed up to this point, you'll actually be earning around 50,000 coins per hour simply from the bounty rewards. So all in all, that means you're going to be earning approximately 170,000 coins per hour. Now is this as good as the Tiger Claws optimized taco farm for coins? No, that one's probably earning you around 250,000 coins an hour. However, with that being said, this is still a very effective means for coins, and even if you're farming sheriff badges, you're still getting 50,000 coins an hour, which isn't bad at all. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up today's farming strategy guide for the sheriff badges. Remember, if you find any good farming guides for anything, whether it be XP or coins or any of these consumable items, Feel free to let me know either in the YouTube comments or in the Twitter DM or in a private message on Discord if need be and I'd love to go ahead and look into it assuming that it's either easier or significantly better than something I already have on the channel. Anyways guys, thank you again for watching today's video. If you do like the video and you have learned something or you've learned how to do some more maths then go ahead hit that like button and subscribe for more epic content. Can't wait to be putting out some more cool stuff for you guys lately. We're almost there to 5k. See you next time. Game on, gamers.